of the many things I dislike about COVID, I was going to have like a production team of some of my more uh, more uh, committed drummers, and they were going to do camera stuff, video, audio, and now I'm having to do everything. Oh my gosh, I really, uh, I already missed them, but you know, now I'm like, now I really miss them. <laughs> now, now you you need them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, it's really good to have you here. This is this is uh. We're getting we're getting to the business end of summer. About to go back to school. Like, what you been doing this summer? What's uh What's been your favorite activity? Well, um, this summer actually, um, myself and my husband have picked up spike ball, um, spike ball and pickleball, and it's just a a real fun little activity for us to do. And we went out, bought a set, and really, it's been the greatest exercise. But you got to have four people to play. So COVID's kind of put a little bit of a damper on that. Can you play singles in spike ball like tennis? Um, not really. <laughs> so spike ball is like volleyball mixed with four square. Um, and they have tournaments all over the country. And we're actually working um, with, we're, we're getting in contact with somebody from the Parks and Rec League here in Hattiesburg to start um, a league here. Uh, an adult and teen league because there are plenty of people that play out on the coast but we want to bring it here to Hattiesburg so we thought it'd just be something fun to do yeah no big deal just starting an entire uh, recreational league in your off time right <laughs> well so throughout the school year you know as I'm teaching and coaching you know I, I like to be very very competitive I mean you can see and the kids know in the classroom we're competitive in the classroom and, and it really helps to promote um, a lot of really good debate and discussion, but we actually play in an adult league. We do sand volleyball, basketball, softball, uh, kickball. So we're, we're actually playing sports year round. Um, and it just kind of just whenever we can get out there and do it. Oh, I played in that kickball league. The first season they had kickball at uh, Heisberg Parks and Rec. And that was so much fun. And could actually surprisingly serious some of those games were surprisingly serious uh and yeah <laughs> they have to get refs out there just because of how serious it gets <laughs> oh it brought up a lot of uh a lot of feelings from elementary school where i'm having to like calm down and go like okay you're you're an adult you got it you gotta it's okay that he tagged you he pegged you it's okay right right you just got to get them harder next time it's fine there you go so, so what are you doing? What are you doing to uh, to prepare for for school? Are you are you ready to go back? You know, um, I don't I don't know if any of us can be a hundred percent ready just with all the changes due to COVID. But I know for myself, and then you know my group of teacher friends, because yes, it's true, we hang out outside of school. That's how much we like each other in school. Is we do stuff together outside of school. It's crazy, but um, we've all decided to go ahead and put all of our materials online. Um, we think it's more efficient. I think it's more efficient um, to go ahead and have everything accessible to where, okay, something happens and, you know, we do have to go back to online learning. Hopefully not, but we're prepared for that now. And I think the best thing we can do is to take all of those great projects and all of those really good group activities and just find a way to be creative with it on an online digital platform. And, you know, already last school year, I was doing, and other teachers too, were doing a bit of that. You know, we, we read different short stories in my senior English class. And one of the things, one of the projects they get to do is we have a story and I'm not gonna give away the title of it because we're gonna read it again this year with the new seniors, but it has a very um, ambiguous ending. There's no way to know what truly happens at the end and it gets everybody really riled up and so then they have an assignment where they go and they create a TikTok, a meme or a GIF. Um, and they, they create that based on what they think the ending of the story should have been. And then they come and present it in class and they're absolutely hilarious, but that's an online presentation. I mean, they literally just airdrop it to me in class. We put it up on the Promethean board. So if we have to go to distance learning, we can compile all of that into a YouTube video, send it out and do critiques that way. So we're still not missing out on those fun projects just because we may or may not be in the classroom. That's, that's incredible. And that's one of those things that I, I mean, I've been saying that too, like, even if you do go to distance, there's really no reason to lose instruction time 
uh, it's just as long as you have the know-how and how to act. It's all about access, you know, and th- that's that's more difficult for, for some than others. But, you know, it's if you have everything online, I, I've been doing lessons too. I know you you had a – did you start a YouTube channel as well? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, nobody should get to look at themselves that much. But, <laughs> but you know, it was, it was really useful. It, it is, as long as Amen. I don't ever critique myself. <laughs> Amen. It's not natural, if you, especially when you're editing things. You're preaching to the choir there. You're not supposed to see yourself that much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and before I started teaching and all through undergrad, I worked as a photographer. So I'm used to seeing other people through a certain lens. And, and I did a little bit of videography as well. So I have that background and I'm used to seeing that and critiquing things and knowing lighting and and. <laughs> Then when you put yourself on camera, it's a totally different situation. So when we started doing our Zooms over, um, you know, the, the distance learning period this last school year, I, I was so used to lecturing and speaking and being hands-on with my classes that I decided, okay, we're going to Zoom every day. I mean, I, my freshman classes, and they can tell you, it was, it was optional because I put all the materials online for them as well. But for those that were, you know, uh, uh, audible learners and people that needed to actually see me talking about it. Um, I, I went on every single day and did a Zoom for about 45 minutes to an hour um, where they could come and listen and we'd read through the story and everything would be posted online afterwards, but it just gave them that chance to, to do that. But then I'd always critique myself going back thinking, oh man, I was looking down at my paper like half the time, like these are basic presenting rules. So I think this year in English, even if we stay in the classroom, it would be really, really neat to film ourselves because some of these kids are going to get out there and they're going to be you know, interviewing for jobs that they're going to have to do all this online. I mean, you never know how your interview is going to be, whether it's, you know, a phone interview or a, a you know, Zoom call. So I think it'd be really good to present like we do in a class physically, but then to teach them how to do that on an online platform too. And, and all of that can be done in English. So I think we're going to take a little bit of an avenue that way this year, along with all the literature. Well, yeah, that's, that's literature is, I think, would be a great class. I think the, the, the transition to going distance, especially with somebody as enthusiastic as you are, I think that would be kind of a natural thing. You're used to reading things on screens all the time. Uh, you know, it's one of those like it, that really goes in hand in hand. Also, you're right. You're absolutely right about the the job situation because we're not going to use technology less as we go forward, especially in the current climate. It's not. You know, it's it's all about using it more. Can you get used to it? You know, and and that is that's great that you can actually do that, and you're thinking that far ahead. Uh, I know a lot of teachers are in that that boat as well. But you you got it together, Coach B. Well, <laughs> I'm trying. You know, we're tweaking. And, and Sacred Heart, it's not supposed to be college prep. It is college prep. And in order to do that, I mean, we need to prepare them for that platform. And it's it's changing every day, every single day. And it's going more online. And, you know, I personally, I almost went crazy when I couldn't be in the classroom with my kids anymore. But we adapt and they're going to have to do the same thing and, and job opportunities, just the way everything is, you know, they're, they're fewer and further between, and they're really going to have to go out for these things. And that's what we're preparing them for to go out into the world. Now we need to do that on the tech side of things too. And just, just to be able to prepare them for that. Well, it's true. Talking about it, it is college prep. I mean, if you're in college now, you're taking classes online. You have to be able to adapt. Adaptation is is definitely the uh, a key word for for this season. And and you're definitely seeing you're seeing the best of people and the worst of people. I in our community, I do see more of the best of people. And you certainly you know personify that where you're. Let's go. Let's. How are we gonna? How are we gonna? How are we gonna continue to get better and develop and and improve ourselves? And it can't be. It can't be stopped because we aren't together. Because I miss that too. You miss that as a human. You miss just being around people. But at the same time, if if you if you have to keep distance, then this is the best way to do it. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, even the way my classroom is set up, you know. It's parents come in and see the building sometimes or kids will be walking down the hall and they'll kind of peek in the doorway and go, 
oh, that's the room with all the couches. Like that's the room with the furniture in it. <laughs> and because the way, you know, I, I like to be there with the students. My desk, my desk is literally this big. It, it literally, I can literally just fit behind it. And it's because I teach from a stool in front of my kids. And with, with literature, you can do that. You know, with discussion-based classes, you can do that. But, you know, they, we gather around, we have forum, we have discussion. And it, it, it's because I like to be engaged in their learning at that level. And it helps me to know what they're understanding and what they're getting. But then you put that on an online platform and you're like, okay, how am I going to do it this way? So you just, you've got to be able to develop it. You've got to be able to, to look into it, research something and be willing to make a couple of mistakes along the way and go, okay, that didn't really work, but you know what? It's all right. We're going to get through it and we're going to make it the best we can. And I think COVID has given us as a school an opportunity to do that, to do away with certain things or to, to try new things because we have this little bit of wiggle room with, okay, right now we're going all the way back to the basics. What is the best and safest thing for our students? And it's like, well, you know, I know we do this or I know we, we used to do that, but now's the time to question why why we're doing it all or why we did it or what we can do better. And it's like, okay, you know what? Big changes, lots of transitions. Now here's our, here's our chance. Here's the opportunity. So uh, I think Sacred Heart is, is really good about saying, okay, there's a possibility and I, th I think we can do it. We can try. We can at least try. So, and, and I think it really, it's really going to pan out. Yeah, I think it, you add to that word adaptation, evaluation, you know, self-evaluation, re-evaluation, really figuring out, you know, in, a, in, in times of crisis, you have to think, uh, you have to have a streamlined outlook, you know, what can I get rid of, what can I keep, uh, what can I add, um, so in the spring, you know, we couldn't keep the person to person contact, so you you add the Zoom calls, you add YouTube lessons and you know, I, I found it useful to do like a weekly, I know that's that's part of our plans going forward, where you have a virtual lesson plan, you 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 outline what you're going to work on that week, and then you can use uh, Google Meet to, you know, address any concerns or questions, and then also just maintain that contact, you know, for people who might be at home, uh, for whatever reason, uh, and I mean, that's that's one of those things too, where we, we never would have done that without this circumstance. But now it's like, man, this is actually this is actually great. You know, you, you can check progress and it's and it's objective. I can see if you logged in and did your your actual work. There's no like, oh, I didn't get it or any, it's like, no, I know you got it and I know you saw it or, you know, you know, stuff, things like that where I know if I was in school, uh, I might gripe about it a little bit. But honest, like overall, I would actually love that accountability and that structure. Right. Well, and again, college prep the same thing when you get to college you know there's not going to be somebody holding your hand walking down the hallway saying hey shouldn't you be here shouldn't you be there this this is this is the student's time to learn this this academic choice of all right like I know there are consequences to my actions because when I didn't sign into that class on time or I didn't show up my grade's going to suffer because of that and it, it's not because you know, we didn't give them the necessary materials or the nest, you know, they've got it all. It's right there in their hands. They're learning that responsibility. And, and I, I love it. It's a great time to do it with a little bit of safety net. And that's what we're here for. But all the way back to college prep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what are you looking forward to most when we go back? Seeing everyone's faces. <laughs> yeah, well, half their faces. <laughs> seeing half their faces, but uh, being able to emote with just their eyes, you know, it, it happens. But I really look forward to, um, to getting back in the classroom and, and just that atmosphere of, I think we're going to have an atmosphere of gratitude once we're back. I mean, these kids, they, they got out right at spring break and they really didn't know that they weren't coming back until they were an entire grade level further. And it, I really think that starting the year off with that attitude of gratitude, just being there is it's going to set us off on a really, really good foot. 
So uh, I'm, I'm excited most about that and the possibilities of, okay, we can hit the ground running because we're just all happy. We're so much more grateful to be back <laughs> this year than ever before. So I know I am. Oh, absolutely. You, you are not alone in that. And there's something about what, what really hurts right now is uncertainty. You know, that's what really gets me, uh, you know, trying to go to sleep at night and all of a sudden, you know, it's either the uncertainty or the, what did I say in that, that YouTube lesson? Or I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have worded this that way. You don't have that contact with people. So you're just in your thoughts all the time. You know, that's why Facebook is an absolute minefield because you're just, you comment, you like something, but you don't have that feedback. And just knowing that we're going back, you know, that something about that is just so comforting. I, I know that nothing is 100% safe. And I, I totally understand people who have reservations about it. Uh, but the way we can go about things, like I did a drum camp in June, you know, there's ways to do things th that, that keep kids safe. You know, you keep masks on, keep them at a distance. Uh, the, way, the way they, you know, you move them from, from place to place, you just have to be methodical about it. It's a little bit of extra effort, a lot bit of extra effort, but it's one of those something about just me thinking about, I've never been so excited to go to school ever in my entire life. And something about this knowing, you know, distance learning, I'm more excited about those who will just be learning from home. I'm more excited about being able to reach them because I have a little more certainty. I'm more confident in my ability to do so. And I, I think, I think I'm, I don't think I'm alone in that, uh, that assertion am I no no I don't think so at all and you know it's like I said we, we really we've had to adapt and it's it's this I don't know if this is the way to do this because this is the first time this has ever happened in you know in in our professional lifetime at least and I mean there there have been pandemics before and you know we've we've had to close down as a society before in history but but that's all history you know and and until you personally go through it, you, you really don't know what that feels like, what that looks like, and, and that uncertainty factor. And it's, it's really comforting to know that even through that uncertainty, you know, for me personally in my classroom, well, I've got all these other teachers, this family of Sacred Heart around me that, uh, you know, I, I was asking, well, gosh, if even something as simple as I, I really think it's great and a much, much needed tool to utilize is peer editing, when we're doing our writing unit and I'm thinking, gosh, I, I mean, I, I don't have, you know, every student's not going to have a computer in order to do, you know, uh, airdrop or send it to each other while we're sitting there in class to not share resources. And then another teacher says, you know what, get some clear uh, sheet protectors and let them put their papers in that because those can be wiped down. And I'm going, there's this wealth of knowledge that we have just right here amongst our own Sacred Heart family. And it's, it's nice knowing you're in a safe enough environment to be able to ask, to be able to present this and say, gosh, I don't know how anybody else got an idea. <laughs> Has anyone else got an idea? And to know that there's usually someone there that either has an answer or is willing to help you look for it. So uncertainty mixed with family, it, it, it really does take a little bit of the load off. Oh, necessity is the mother of invention. You know, you're being pushed to innovate and adapt. There's going to be so many positive things that come from this. It's just hard to see because you don't know what they are yet. You know, it's one, it's going to be those. I'm excited about that, like going throughout the year. And, you know, what are we going to figure out this year? What are we going to how are we going to innovate? What are we going to produce? Uh, yes, there is a nasty thing called COVID that's right here you know, in my near sight, but f let's try and think farsighted, like, what are we actually going to get done? Uh, that's, that's such an exciting thought to me. I mean, you know, and it's, and it's obvious that's exciting to you as well. It's so nice to like, it's so nice to be around some, even in a Zoom call, it's so nice to be around somebody who has that, that energy. That's so important to, people need to know, you guys need to know that this is at Sacred Heart, this kind of energy is at Sacred Heart. Yeah. Oh, of, of course it is. And you know, it's, and that kind of energy really is contagious. I mean, if we feel that and we're excited about it and you know, the kids will be too, and they're, they're right there in that same boat with us. I mean, yes, we're the authority in the classroom, but we're all working towards the same goal of 
preparing them for after Sacred Heart. And, and I'm just excited about their college plans as they are. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thrilled for them. And the best way to show that is by helping them be thrilled about it every single day in class, every single day in the hallways. And, and uh, yeah, you just have to a, a, adopt that, that mentality of, okay, we can do this. We're going to get it done and we're going to do it together. Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's time to, it's time to pull up those bootstraps for sure. I definitely, this is one of those things though. It is unique because it seems like such a long, it's such a long period of time in which you have to deal with it. Like hurricane Katrina was, I was in high school, uh, came through and it, t- we lived in Hattiesburg. We were one of the few houses in Hattiesburg that was like pretty much totaled. And that was the first time in my life where I had to, f- I worked so hard because a pine tree pulled the carport down onto all three of the, the family's cars. And I, I, it's my senior year of high school. I'm getting my car out from under that carport. And I've never worked that hard physically. Uh, I mean, and, and it was one of those things like we ate outside, like we grilled outside all the time. My, my Uncle Paul came from from Abbeville, Louisiana and helped us out and like really kind of Uncle Paul rescued us. And it's stuff like that. Like I'm smiling talking about a natural disaster. You know, if before that, if you told me that was the kind of feeling I would have years later, they'd be like, what are you talking about? That's no way. But I feel like this is going to be the same thing. When you kind of go into survival mode, yeah, it's, it's not relaxing. But then again, life isn't supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be relaxing all the time. And man, what a, uh, what a lesson to learn for these, these young people, you know, that, man, it, it's not always going to pan out how I want it to, but I'm still going to have to persist. And that's getting to see kids realize that. I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of why we got into teaching in the first place. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I think this last year's senior group was a real testament to that. I mean, they were the class that survived Corona. I mean, they, they, that was their senior year and we were there at graduation. You know, you didn't see them complaining or groaning about not getting to do things the normal way or this or that. And it, you know, they saw it, they made the most out of that opportunity to say, okay, this is different, but it can be just as good. And, and they, they really, they, they did so well and they had such a great mindset and outlook about it that it was a wonderful ceremony. And, you know, they finished their year and now they're heading off to college going, man, that was crazy, but you know, we survived it and they, they thrived through it. And I really hope that that can be a good example for this upcoming senior class to say, you know, that there's a lot going on and, and there are bigger things in the world. There's, there are bigger things going on than, than the, the minor inconveniences or the, the different changes that are going on through school with me right now. And I get it when you're a teenager, it, especially that senior year, man, this is pivotal. I'm finally in high school, you know, with, as a freshman or I'm moving up to the high school building in junior high, but you know, it's, this too shall pass. And I really think that it's, it's going to be a great year for everyone to band together and say, okay, you know, we're going to do what it takes. We're going to do what we have to do. And, and these seniors were such a testament to that. I, I, it was great. I was so glad I got to teach senior English last year. <laughs> oh yeah. I've made no secret about my affection for that senior class. They're a great group of people and don't come around all that often, honestly. Uh, but well, this, this upcoming senior class too, they're they're gonna have they're looking at it at the beginning of the year, going okay. Well, how are we gonna get through this? And I I totally understand, I I totally understand an obstacle right in front of you. It feels like it's gonna be forever. It feels and it's totally okay that it feels like it's gonna be forever. You just have to know that it won't be. Like you say, this too shall pass. And and you know who knows who knows what it's gonna look like in January or when we get to May for graduation. We don't know what it's going to look like, and that uncertainty, once again, that that dirty word of un- uncertainty <laughs> crops up again, but, you know, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay, and if all you have to face is uncertainty, I mean, later on, uh, certain problems arise, and 
this is nothing. This is nothing, man. I went my whole senior year. I I wore a mask or I, you know, I went through COVID. Right. I mean, it'll only make them stronger. It will. I know it doesn't feel like that. And people keep saying it. They, they're probably tired of hearing it already, but. <laughs> oh, I'm tired of saying it. So they're definitely tired of hearing it. But, but, you know, we adapt. It's what we do. Well, you know, we talk about all this uncertainty. It is, uh, it is real. It's certainly real. You have a message, though, for those students of yours who, who, who just want to hear your voice and hear you say something uh, encouraging, or I'll let you take it away. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, well, I will say specifically first to my junior high basketball girls that have been working their tails off all summer. Um, I I really, really cannot wait to see you in the halls again. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to this season. And, you know, it's, we've met with adversity before ladies and it's gonna keep happening, but, you know, we just, we push through because it's the crusader way, you know, faith, respect, honor, on and off the court all the time. And I, I know you all can do it. And you know that I'm here for you. And for my freshman class from last year, that we didn't really get to say goodbye. There was, there was really no closure for that, that last year in the classroom. Um, I'm excited that you're moving on to sophomore English. Um, not my problem. Bye guys. No, <laughs> no, you know, you can always come to my room for help. Um, and, and I, I'm so, so happy for these upcoming freshmen and these upcoming seniors that, that I know will be in my room. My room's going to look a little bit different this year, but, I can't wait, can't wait to get in there and not just for you to learn about literature, but for me to learn about you. Um, because that's, that's what that is. This, we're, we're forming bonds and relationships in the classroom, not just you know, teacher to student, but you know, with one another and with a school as a whole. And that's, that's what we're gonna learn how to do through literature. So I'm, I'm really excited for the journey for y'all. And whether it's in the classroom all year or online, we're not going to lose that enthusiasm and that, that, that connection. So really that's, that's all I got. <laughs> well done. I know there's lots of people that really loved hearing that, honestly. Well, thanks so much for sitting down with me and taking the time out of your, out of your summer. Uh, I know, you know, you, you, this is your, this is your time. So go do something fun. Enjoy the rest of your week and uh, stay safe out there. Thanks. I appreciate it. You too. That was so... That's that's one... That's probably the best episode we've had.